there, folks. Earthmaster here, jumping in on the live stream on Friday the 13th, November 13, 2020. It is about 8.47 p.m. West Coast time. Looks a little chilly up there in Yellowstone National Park there with some ice icicles hanging off the uh, camera there. Pretty cool looking. The latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 3.7 up in Idaho, right around Stanley, Idaho, up there. Quite a bit of earthquake activity taking place in Nevada and also along the west coast here you can see a 5.3 off the coast of Mexico uh, as well here's the latest information from the USGS there this is the all magnitudes map here we'll get to Nevada here in just a minute I want to cover some activity up there in Idaho just now 3.7 there uh, near Stanley quite a bit of uptick since the um, earthquake this morning there in Nevada <clears throat> So kind of keep an eye on that as well. Some earthquake activity up here through Yellowstone into parts of Montana as well. You can see a little cluster of quakes there into the Yellowstone Nas National Park region. We'll go ahead and cover that real quick there. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh this for the latest on the Yellowstone overview. Uh, that little spitter spatter of earthquakes there is going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, let's see, hold on one second here. <clears throat> This is at 5.5 that kind of showed up this morning. And also we have 4.8, I believe those uh, other ones are. Looking on the map here, I am assuming, trying to find the latest, trying to find those little quakes that they're talking about there. Okay, I'm, I believe this is it up here. This is the 5.5 in Nevada. And this is at, uh, well, that one actually looks a little bit stronger than that. But anyway, these are the Nevada quakes here, the localized earthquakes that are showing up on the uh, USGS map here. These microquakes in the northwest corner of the park there are these specific quakes here. Very localized, very sharp points. Uh, you can see a pretty good handful of them and uh, even extending there past these red lines there. A couple more microquakes. So that's what's going on there with the... Uh, a handful of quakes there on the USGS map. Um, there's a, a little bit of activity going on through Montana up here. This is uh, not out of the norm, but uh, definitely some interesting activity. Microquakes right around Flathead Lake up there, a Montana region. Shooting over here towards the Pacific Northwest. Uh, a little bit of activity right around the Mount St. Helens area. Some uh, more explosions. I'm not for sure what's going on up there in in Washington but there's quite a bit of uh, explosions going on throughout the day <clears throat> and uh, this one within about oh, five miles of uh, Mount St. Helens there no specific earthquakes there at the summit a little microquake well to the north there uh, but still nonetheless some activity going on <clears throat> up there around the uh, volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest uh, Southern California region, we did see a little bit of swarming activity ramp up here following the 5.5 earthquake in Nevada. You can see about 33 earthquakes here. This activity has died down, but uh, throughout, the, throughout the day there, we did see a pretty good handful of microquakes and whatnot in that region. Also there looks like maybe potentially a uh, migration of swarming uh, well to the north and also a little bit further closer to the San Andreas Fault System that sits right here on this, uh, uh, just to the east of the Salton Sea region. That's the southern section of the San Andreas Fault there. Uh, let's see what else here. Um, so we shoot up here to the north. Ridgecrest activity hasn't really seen a ramp up of earthquake activity that I kind of thought we'd see there, but uh, it's still, um, still possible. Nevada, on the other hand, definitely, <clears throat> man, we'll talk about a, a lot of earthquake activity here. Uh, just here, <clears throat> excuse me, and within the specific area, about 205 earthquakes that uh, have struck within the past 24 hours. You can see the list over there. Uh, pretty extensive. A lot of microquakes, but also a lot of twos and threes in there as well. Uh, I'm wanting to say the largest, well, of course, the largest so far is that 5. Point, oh, they downgraded it there. It was a 5.5 this morning, downgraded by the folks at the USGS to 5.3. That was quickly followed up by a couple fours there, two 4.3s there back to back. And uh, I believe they had also, I'm pretty sure they had like a 4.8 here. 
at one point during the day. Uh, I'm not going to go through all those here. Let me see. Let's go over here to 2.5 and above. <clears throat> Get a better view here. Yeah, maybe not. Looks like they may have... Uh, completely downgraded it or completely took it off because I did get a notification on my phone that a 4.8 struck around mine in Nevada. Uh, that was a little bit earlier this morning after these quakes. So that's kind of uh, kind of odd, <clears throat> but it is what it is. On the all magnitudes here, you can see, <clears throat> man, I tell you what, I'm just losing my voice today. Dusty and windy out here today in California. A little bit of rain around me, but for some reason, it didn't rain where I was at. It just it never fails. I love weather, but for some reason I just can't seem to attract it. Uh, I can see a little line of activity up here. <clears throat> Latest quake a 2.5 or 2.1 down here near. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's Rachel. It looks like Rachel or Rochelle. Uh, probably probably saying it wrong, but that's okay. You can see this little uh, area down here along the mountain range. And up through uh, the Tonopah region here, very uh, still pretty, uh, still pretty active out there. I mean, those those quakes right there in the red indicating uh, most recent activity there within the last hour. So we're seeing about 10 earthquakes or so an hour. Um, so it's you know it's still still pretty busy out there in the desert. And this activity there near. Mina is off of a, uh, well, it's still considered aftershock activity from the 6.5 that struck there in that specific region back in May 15th of this year. That was that 6.5 there that struck in this region. 2.7 kilometers below the surface ever since then, man. It's just been a daily, daily um, swarm of activity here. And today with that 5.3, 5.5 there, uh, obviously there's, uh, you know, that pressure has not gone away out here in this region. We did see a little bit of activity down here way further south, following all that activity in Nevada. Just off the coast of Mexico, 5.3 striking out there. Uh, so I still, I'm, I'm still betting that we will see some uh, further activity out here in Southern California region. If not, an uptick in swarming around the Ridgecrest area or potentially up here around the Mammoth Lakes. Remember we did see a, a pretty good swarm of earthquakes up here right outside the Long Valley Super Volcano Rim area uh, which kind of it actually kind of extended a ways over here almost almost like it was connecting to the Nevada earthquake activity uh, but recently that has calmed down but I wouldn't doubt it we start to see this uh, pick up here or potentially uh, in the Ridgecrest area, a little um, uptick, if you will. Could be in the future for the Ridgecrest folks. So, kind of monitoring that area. Uh, oh, man, Oklahoma. Just uh, some microquakes popping off up there. Overall, general activity once again tonight, folks. Pretty quiet out here along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Even down through the Fiji Islands area. Very quiet. Hawaii, on the other hand, a couple small microquakes. Looks like they did have a 3.8 strike out there. Way north up here, folks. Kind of in an interesting area. We normally see a lot of activity, volcanic activity here. Around the Kilauea volcano and also this undersea uh, Loi. What is it called? Uh, let's see where they go. Oh, man. this Yeah, that, that volcano down there. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that tonight. So this 3.8 striking at about 6.4 kilometers below surface, relatively shallow for earthquake activity in Hawaii. Uh, let's go over here to the um, doo -doo 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 satellite view real quick. See uh, what's going on. Of course, Hawaii, right? All these islands, a chain of volcanic activity, right? Over time, and you can see the uh, raised land up there. Uh, this is all underwater. Of course, if we had a major... Um, a major uh, subsidence of water. A lot of this land would be, uh, well, it'd be it'd be showing. It'd be a Hawaii would probably triple in size. Uh, but where this 3.8 struck, there's not a whole lot of activity. I mean, you can see all these volcano domes and and little cool things there. 
kind of want to go go over there and check that stuff out one of these days if I ever get the chance and you know it takes some money to get over there that's for sure um, but this 3.8 struck well outside of this region here by a few miles specifically where this struck see a couple small domes around here but uh, I mean it's just not a not a lot right there where where uh, this earthquake struck so just a little odd Where's the activity down here to the south? Deep activity, 33, 34 kilometers below surface. Um, almost 40 kilometers there um, in this area of the Big Island. Uh, let's see here, where'd this go? Okay, go back over here. Look how, uh, technically, look at how far the Hawaii Islands stretch. You know, this is just the the uh, the ones that are showing above above land or above not above land above the ocean, but technically it extends all the way out here. You know you can get a pretty good see you can get a pretty good view of the seafloor on uh, the USGS maps here with the uh, the uh, ocean view. It's pretty cool to check out um, if you want to look at that. You know it's not just all smooth down there. It's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting features and whatnot, including the Cascadia subduction zone. You can see all those ridges right there from all the pressure built up over time. You know, kind of similar to the mountains that that we see uh, in the western United States. Just a lot of buildup right there. You know, so there's some tremendous force going on uh, not only along the Cascadia sub subduction megathrust area, but also the Gorda escarpments here uh, with the uh, Pacific Plate. And uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure out here. A lot of uh, potential for some major earthquakes uh, in the future no doubt switching back over here to the uh, terrain let's get rid of some of those there and uh, yeah for the most part like I said folks relatively quiet out here along the Pacific Ring of Fire I still expect some movement there along the west coast <clears throat> trimmer let's check that out real quick before uh, in the update video here this is from Friday the 13th more activity but a little bit further north you can see it extending well into the vancouver island area just into the north part here this is all new over the past couple of weeks we've seen activity really ramping up along the uh, northern california area and also into oregon and washington where it remained relatively quiet up here in the vancouver island area but today different story we're definitely seeing some uptick in the trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone, which does extend up into this region here. So uh, keeping an eye on that area as well. Hopefully um, hopefully my microphone's pick, picking me up. Just kind of talking quiet here so I don't lose my voice. Uh, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> I think that's about, about it. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think that's about it, folks. Trimmer map. I'm trying to think what else there was. I, I wanted to cover something. I'm just not for sure exactly what it was. I'm just kind of kind of drawing a blank today. Uh, let's see. Far side sunspots might be big sunspots. Okay. Of course, it's gonna take a couple days for it to switch around here to our side and get some views here. All right, um, I am out of here. I think, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but uh, it is what it is. Please stay safe out there, folks. Still got a couple hours of Friday the 13th out here. Friday night. What can go wrong on Friday the 13th? Friday night, right? Pretty crazy. Have a good night, everyone. Please stay safe, and we will chat at you guys tomorrow sometime. Have a good night.